Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on proximal myopathy. Proximal myopathy is the weakness of the proximal muscles of the girdle including the quadriceps and biceps. It can be easily demonstrated by asking the patient to rise from a seated position or to pretend to be brushing their hair or hanging out washing. To test for proximal myopathy of the upper limbs. The associated conditions are hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, Cushing syndrome, peripheral neuropathies, and polymyalgia rheumatica. Other less common conditions are Addison's disease, hyperparathyroidism, sarcoidosis, coliac disease, polymyositis, dermatomyositis, and genetic muscular dystrophies. Let's look at the different mechanism for different causes of proximal myopathy. In hyperthyroidism, the possible causes of proximal myopathy are increased cellular metabolism and energy utilization, increased catabolism and protein degradation, inefficient energy utilization, disturbance of the function of muscle fibers due to increased mitochondrial respiration, accelerated protein degradation and lipid oxidation, enhanced beta-adrenergic sensitivity, or insulin resistance. It is thought that an accelerated metabolism combined with insulin resistance results in muscle glycogen depletion, reductions in ATP and creatine phosphate concentrations. These changes and a reduction in muscle creatinine contribute to weakness. This flow chart shows the simplified mechanism of proximal myopathy in hyperthyroidism. In hyperthyroidism, there is excess in thyroid hormones. This causes nuclear-mediated and direct effects on glucose transport. There is increased cellular metabolism and energy utilization. Increased catabolism and protein degradation. Inefficient energy utilization. Disturbance of the function of muscle fibers due to increased mitochondrial respiration. Accelerated protein degradation and lipid oxidation. And enhanced beta-adrenergic sensitivity. With hypermetabolic state and insulin resistance. This then causes muscle glycogen depletion, reduced ATP and creatinine content. And the patient will have weakness and fatigue causing proximal myopathy. Next, hypothyroidism can also cause proximal myopathy. In hypothyroidism, there is lack of thyroid hormone. This slows down normal metabolic function, including protein turnover impaired carbohydrate metabolism. Hypothyroidism also reduces muscle enzyme activity, glucose uptake, mitochondrial oxidation capacity, and muscle glycogenolysis. All of these elements cause muscle cells to be neither possessing nor utilizing energy as efficiently, resulting in weakness. Another cause of proximal myopathy is hyperparathyroidism. Possible causes of proximal muscle weakness in hyperparathyroidism are PTH-mediated changes or vitamin D defects. For PTH-mediated changes, there is PTH-stimulated protein breakdown of skeletal muscle, which may be mediated by two pathways. First is PTH activating CAMP and inducing an increase in mitochondrial calcium permeability, which then activates intracellular proteases. The second mechanism is PTH, also via activation of CAMP-dependent phosphorylation, may reduce the sensitivity of calcium to troponin and the activity of myofibrillar proteins needed for effective functioning. Whereas for vitamin D defects, there is impaired activation of vitamin D to the active form of calcitriol. This results in an inability of the sarcoplasmic reticulum to maintain appropriate levels of calcium, which affects myofibrillar functioning. This all causes proximal muscle weakness. In Cushing's syndrome, the catabolic effects of glucocorticoids break down proteins in the muscle fibers, causing weakness. Additional factors induced by excess steroids include hypokalemia, depressed protein synthesis, decreased sarcolemma activity, and increased myosin degeneration. In hypokalemia, there is an imbalance in the electrochemical gradient between the intracellular and extracellular spaces. Simply put, a potassium gradient is required between the two spaces in order for cells to effectively depolarize and repolarize. Decreasing the potassium outside a cell causes hyperpolarization of the cell, making it harder for the cells, in this case proximal skeletal muscle fibers, to fire. Moreover, in patients with secondary Cushing syndrome, excess ACTH may also contribute to weakness and impair muscular transmission via decreasing the endplate potential. Lastly, Addison's disease may also cause proximal myopathy. Normal levels of steroid hormones are required for the function of a variety of systems which impact muscle power. In Addison's disease, there is adrenal insufficiency. This adrenal insufficiency has been shown to impair muscle carbohydrate metabolism, cause electrolyte imbalances such as hyperkalemia, alter muscle blood flow and even adrenergic sensitivity. 
There is also hyperkalemia, due to a loss of mineralocorticoid activity. This hyperkalemia is coupled with a depletion of muscle intracellular potassium and depressed sodium potassium pump activity, further affecting muscle function. For the sign value of proximal myopathy, it is seen in 60 to 80 percent of patients with hyperthyroidism, but also seen in numerous other endocrinological and other disorders. It is not common for proximal myopathy to be an initial presentation of hyperthyroidism. In hypothyroidism, it is seen in 30 to 80 percent of patients, and therefore, has only moderate sensitivity and low specificity. That's all for this video. Thank you.